Hello and welcome to this brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the much requested effect of creating a first person muzzle flash effect like seen in this recent video that I uploaded um, to my channel the other day. Now this has been requested since Final Cut Pro first came out. I released a tutorial to explain how to create muzzle flashes uh, using only built in tools in Final Cut and now I'm going to show you how to composite such muzzle flashes behind guns uh, from a per first person perspective like this Uzi gun which is shooting uh, my brother in this video. Now in this tutorial I'm going to be using some pre-made uh, muzzle flashes which you can get from Google if you just Google muzzle flash. In this case they're taken from the Video Copilot uh, Action Essentials collection. Now what we're going to do uh, to just jump straight in is grab our base clip, if we um, hide our clip here which has got a visual effect on it and we're gonna use this base clip, you can see this is this is the clip, it's just we've got a gun sound um, underneath and it's just a gun shaking my brother blows himself back if we right click on this clip and press new compound clip and we're gonna call this Uzi muzzle flash. This is going to open us up into a brand new timeline by double clicking on that clip. And this is essentially where we can work independently on this clip without having to worry about the rest of the timeline. So we can go ahead straight away and throw it in our muzzle flash. Now bear in mind some of the frame rate errors you might get. So for instance this muzzle flash uh, last across two frame, two frames. If your footage was shot above uh, 30 frames a second, then this might last up for four frames. So make sure you trim that down to two frames in such case. Uh, but we basically only want one. We're going to start that here, um, and then if we just position our playhead there, we can use this transform tool here to go and position the muzzle flash where it's going to be over the gun. Just imagine that it's already behind the gun. So you can get the positioning right. If you want to zoom out here, you can press Command minus as long as this uh, viewport is selected over the timeline. Otherwise, you're going to zoom out of the uh, out of the timeline, and that looks about right. And press done. Just bear in mind that these muzzle flashes last about one second. So, uh, in the example I showed you a second ago, you're going to have to do this multiple times. Now, how do we go about getting this gun back over the top of? the muzzle flash, because that's essentially essentially what we want to do. Well, we're actually going to do this using a great tool uh, from Final Cut Pro Effect.com, FCPFX.com. They've got a great plugin called the Advanced Masking Tools 2, and this basically allows you to create really advanced custom uh, shape outlines, which we're going to use to draw around the gun. If we just press V for now on the uh, muzzle flash, just to hide that, we're going to hold down the option key or the alt key if you're in England and drag the base clip above and then we're going to press B command B to split the clip select the clip again and press command B and then that has split the clip at the playhead um, one other thing you can do if you want to end this clip here is you can hold down the option and press close bracket and that just trims the clip to end there and that way we've got this clip that lasts one frame along with the muzzle flash which is underneath so you won't be able to see any of it. We can put the muzzle flash back in actually so we can see what we're cutting around more clearly. Now if we go into our effects browser you can see that we've got a my FCP effects folder uh, after you install the plugin using the installer which is comes with the download and you can see we've got a few starting points to get us started depending on how many points you want. Now I'm going to go with the 16 point diamond to begin with, see how that goes and just drag it in over the top there and you can see we've now got our handles to start masking around the gun. So the first thing we want to do is try and maximize the size of this viewport so that we get the most viewing screen possible. Then we're going to bring out some of these lower handles just to put the gun back in initially and then we can start putting these to the gun like 
like such. Now bear in mind we're going to apply a couple of other effects um, to level this out a little bit. And then we're going to bring these down. You can see this could be a bit tedious, so when you have multiple effects, the best thing to do is to just copy and paste this effect. Um, and then that's going to give you a far better starting point. Than uh, going from a 16 point rectangle again. And what I'm doing is ensuring we've got these little ear pieces well, what look like cat ears, basically where the um, the sight is for the gun, because that's the more complicated area that we're trying to deal with here. Like that. Uh, then we're going to call up the inspector, so we've got plenty of options to play around with here, such as mask, roundness, mask edge, blur, and what we want to do is first of all just, just uh, shift up the mask roundness a bit, and that's just going to cut the uh, a little bit of the harsh edges off our mask and then you want to go with mask feathering and you can see that by default that shifts the edge outwards um, if we zoom in here and we can grab this orange rectangle in here to look at what we're doing we can change the uh, fall off shrink that a little bit Increase the mask edge blur. Just gonna blur the area where the mask edge ends. And you can see now we've actually very quickly, pretty effectively, created a muzzle flash, which is behind the gun. You can see we've got a bit of a black edge here, so what we can do is just play around with the mask a little bit. Like that. just so it looks like it's encapsulating that a little bit more. One of the other things to bear in mind, just uh, aside from the actual masking process, is the actual muzzle flash, you can see, is very crystal clear. We've got these, these fine lines coming up from the gun, and if we actually look at the shot, the gun is not in focus at all. So it actually makes sense to add a blur. If we come down to the effects here and find the blur section, and just add a Gaussian blur to the uh, flash. You can see by default that adds a ridiculous amount of blur, uh, but we can decrease that a lot. Add a little bit. Uh, then we can go even go into color and bring down some of the color correction, the uh, saturation, so that it matches that of the shot. We can increase the exposure a little bit. Basically. like that. And then what we can also do is just drop the opacity just a tiny bit. And there we go, and that's looking pretty good. And what I'm going to say now is repeat steps, however many steps we took, until we have a rapid fire succession clip. If we go back out into the main clip by clicking on this arrow here, you can see that where we had the original clip we now have this clip which if we arrow through it you can see it has the muzzle flash in place and with the color correction as well which has been applied using the total adjustment plugin which I covered in a previous tutorial link in the description um, everything seemed to look nice and together and that is how using the aid of FunnelCutProFX.com FCPFX.com you can create a first person shooter style muzzle flash inside of Final Cut Pro 10 because Final Cut does not give you the advanced masking tools that are required to trace around a gun. 
um, you can only use a four point mask. I also created this effect on this pistol shot here. Um, you can see I only needed an eight pin to take us around the end of the barrel and to take us down here a little bit as well. Um, and one of the other things that I did here using FCP effects uh, masking tool is I added in some blowback. You can see that if we trim through this, the barrel actually sh blows back. Now, by the second frame, that looks a little bit silly, but in real motion, it looks really cool because obviously, when you fire a gun, the muzzle, the the uh, the top blows back. So if we just play these back first without. It literally just looks like someone's put in a muzzle flash behind the gun. Whereas if we put in the blowback, much better. It actually looks like the gun is firing. It's more than enough to sell the effect, and if someone goes back and watches it twice, well then you've won, because they've watched your video twice. Um, and that's one of the nice ways to look at it, if in doubt. So hopefully this was useful, thank you very much for watching, I know this has been a much requested tutorial and um, hopefully this delivered uh, for you. Um, yes, this is the plugin that I would recommend, no it is not possible to create it without such a plugin, there are other ones on the market but this has been very good The um, with the defaults you can use um, and also with the customization tool like the uh, the feathering that you get in the inspector panel so thank you very much for watching go and check out the uh, this plugin on the official website and I'll see you guys soon with a brand new tutorial or short film or motion tutorial dot 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 ellipses